Well, hello and welcome to the tundra in Rocky Mountain National Park. It's a gorgeous day up here. Usually the winds are howling and I can barely stand, but today it's really quite pleasant. The sun is even coming out. And uh, today I'm up on the side of Flat Top Mountain, just below the summit, about four miles above uh, Bear Lake. And uh, what a beautiful day. Well, I was thinking, uh, over the years, many people have asked me, what in the world do I carry in this massive bag of mine? And so I thought if you're interested, I would show you uh, what I've got in it. But uh, up here is probably not the best place to do it. So why don't you come with me? We'll head on down to my uh, studio and I'll open up my bag so you can get a glimpse of uh, what's inside. All right, let's go. Eric. Hi there. Well, hello and welcome back to the warmth. I hope you enjoyed that little uh, trip down Flat Top Mountain, first on foot and then on skis, down to Bear Lake and then uh, coming here to my studio to uh, show you what I carry in my bag during the winter season. Now, I know I carry quite a bit of gear, but uh, I'm hoping that you'll get a few ideas for yourself, even if you're not carrying all of this uh, equipment. As a photographer, I need to carry quite a bit. So let me start off by showing you the bag I use. And I use quite a large bag. Uh, this is the Shimoda Action X 70. It's a 70 liter bag, and so it holds a lot of gear. You may have noticed the funny top on here. And this simply unclips and it unwinds, allowing me to put in more gear as I need it or crunch it down and have less gear as I need it. It's a, it's a really nice feature to this bag. Another thing that I really love about this bag are all the straps it ha has on the outside. And so I can easily put skis on the outside or snowshoes or tripods or other equipment that I need to carry. Now this is a very specific camera bag designed for photographers and videographers and uh, most of those these days have a zippered compartment at the back. <clears throat> In fact, the entire back end zips off and gives me easy access to my camera gear. I've emptied out all of this bag, and what I'm gonna do is go through it with you as I repack it so you can see just what I put in my bag. And the first thing we do is I add my camera gear. And I keep all of my camera gear in a little cube like this. Uh, it just zips open, <clears throat> and inside of here, you'll see that I've got a camera with uh, three lenses, as well as a little microphone, extra batteries, and various adapters and cleaning cloths for the camera. And today, I've got my uh, Fuji GFX 100S. It's a medium format digital camera and is the camera currently that I'm, I'm using the most. But what I carry from day to day varies. But in this cube, I've got about 12 pounds of photography gear in here. And so it just slips into this bag really nicely at the back. And I keep it uh, open at the back. And then I just shut it, zip it up. I don't keep anything else in this back area other than camera equipment. 
And uh, so it gives me really nice, easy access to it. I just set my camera bag down in the snow or the ground. It's protected on the backside. Unzip it and have easy access. The next thing that always goes in my bag is my first aid kit. Now, I have inside my first aid kit, I keep three separate bags. One is a uh, emergency blanket in case I get stuck out at night and it's really cold or I'm injured. And that is kind of an, an aluminum thin blanket. Next, I keep a bag for minor incidents. And this is gonna have things like patches for blisters and band-aids. And I've got an emergency whistle in here. I have uh, tweezers and yeah, all sorts of little things, including an extra very tiny headlamp just in case mine was to die. And then the third bag that goes in here has tape and big gauze bandages, a needle and thread in case I really have to sew something up on the body. I hope I don't have to, but a lot of other equipment in here that is really helpful for emergencies, including for CPR. And then probably the most important thing I have in here is a wilderness first aid book in case I'm stuck out there or have to help someone and can't remember exactly what I'm supposed to do in that situation. Now, all the gear in the world isn't going to help you unless you know what to do with it. And so I recommend taking a wilderness first aid course and keeping a little book like that in the uh, first aid kit. And so that goes into my bag first. Next, I always keep an extra sun hat with me. And this is just a little scrunchable one uh, in case I lose my sun hat. The sun in Colorado can be very extreme. And I also carry sunscreen, an extra thing of sunscreen. In the summer, I probably have two things of sunscreen because the rays are so intense that uh, it is very easy to get burned, even in the winter time. And uh, most dermatologists will tell you that in Colorado, we have the highest number of cases of skin cancer in the nation, and I can prove it with my scars. And so I keep this in here at all times. Uh, I also keep with me my commercial filming license with the National Park that allows me to do these videos when I'm out in the park. Um, it is required. And after that, the next thing I keep with me in the winter time is a pair of very, very warm, thick winter mittens. And yes, I do wear gloves and other things while I'm out there, but I keep an extra pair. In fact, I needed them yesterday when I got high up in the mountains. Uh, the temperatures really dropped as the wind picked up, started to lose feeling in my fingers. And in here, I always keep some hand warmers that I can pop open if it starts to get really cold. And I always keep an extra warm hat. And then I always have two jackets with me. I'm usually wearing one and then the other one goes in here. And one of them is always a down jacket. And I keep that with me in my bag usually all year round. And then the other one is a hard shell that uh, blocks the wind. The down one doesn't really block the wind, but it will give you warmth. And so using a combination of a harder one that, that blocks the wind with the, the soft, warm one uh, can be a really good thing. And so on this last trip, I, I was wearing the down jacket and this shell goes back in the bag. And I'll be, I wore the down jacket. And next, I keep in here some food. Always make sure you have some food when you're out in the mountains. And in here, in this bag, I usually have a trail mix, some dried fruit, and maybe a healthy granola bar or two. Um, in this second bag, I have electrolyte tablets as well as something called V-Fuel. It's an energy gel made by a friend here in Estes Park. Even has my picture of Long's Peak on the outside. Uh, but it's made for endurance athletes, particularly those who are running 100, 200 mile races through the mountains. I don't do that, but uh, sometimes I'm really pushing hard and I can feel I'm losing energy. And one of those gel packs will sometimes give me the energy I need to uh, finish the hike with the heavy pack. Uh, and then lastly, in this top pocket, I'll throw in my ski helmet. And inside my ski helmet, I usually have a pair of goggles. And uh, looks like today I also have my emergency avalanche beacon. I always wear that when I'm out skiing in the park. Um, it just happened. I usually pull it out of here before we uh, head up into the mountains and put it on and turn it on, make sure it's working. If you're gonna spend a lot of time in the mountains of Colorado during the winter season, I recommend taking an avalanche course and becoming well acquainted with uh, 
how to avoid avalanches, what to look for, what to do, and how to help someone in case there is an avalanche. All right, well, the next section I'm going to add, I'm gonna turn this over, and I always carry with me a headlamp, and you know, I'm oftentimes out dark and early or out late and it's dark, or if you ever get trapped in the mountains you didn't expect to spend the night out, just having one of these is a really smart, <clears throat> smart thing to do. And so that goes, tuck that up here. And I talked about how bright that sun is and how intense it is. And so I always carry sunglasses with me as well. And I like these because they, they don't have arms on the back. They just use a string to tie to, your, to the back of your head. And that way they fold right up and fit in my bag without uh, getting broken. I was breaking them all the time before. Now next, for avalanche issues, I always have a, a collapsible shovel that expands so I can dig someone out of an avalanche if I ever needed to, or if I had to build a safety shelter out in the mountains. And then along with that, I keep a probe. And if there's an avalanche and someone's buried, you can use, you can use firstly your avalanche beacon to find out roughly where they are pull out the probe and you and it's like 15 feet long and you can probe beneath the snow to find out where they are and then use the shovel to help get them out. And uh, it's a responsible thing to do to have this equipment and know how to use it out here in the mountains. All right, well, we're nearly there. Now on the outside, obviously I carry a tripod. I like a big heavy tripod because uh, there really isn't such a thing as a good light tripod. You need the stability and the weight in order to uh, get stability of your photographs. And so I'm using a, about a five pound tripod, uh, carbon fiber that slips in here, it's quite tall. And that just slips into the outside of my bag. Next comes my water bottle. And uh, I've got my Nature First sticker on it. If you're a nature photographer or videographer, check out naturefirst.org. It's an organization I helped start. We're in 70 nations, and it promotes responsible nature photography. Now, one of the tricks you might not know about, if you're out in the icy cold weather, what I always do is I seal the top tightly, make sure that it's not going to drip, and then I store my water bottle in my bag upside down. Now, you might think, well, why in the world would you do that? Well, if you notice, you, there's a, uh, an air bubble at the top. And when it starts freezing, it starts freezing from where that air bubble is. And so it starts freezing this direction. And if I have it this way, I've had it happen many times until I learned, it would freeze maybe a quarter inch or a half inch. And there's lots of liquid inside still, but I can't get it out. And I'm thirsty in the mountains and can't drink because my water bottle has frozen. If I store it this way, the ice will form at the bottom of the bottle, allowing me to drink it when I need to. So I stick that in the outside. Next is a vital piece of equipment I don't leave home without. And this is a Garmin InReach. I have an older version. They now make them much smaller. But this tracks me in the mountains. It uh, communicates with a satellite and it plots my location on a map every 10 minutes so my wife can see exactly where I'm going or the direction I'm heading in case anything happened to me. Uh, we have had people go missing in the park, died of a heart attack, and no one knew where to look for them. Uh, they didn't have time to send an emergency distress call. So uh, this is an important thing for that regard. Also, I can call for emergency help if I need to. It has a 911 button and it'll, uh, they'll contact the National Park and tell them exactly where I am that I'm having an emergency. I've used it a couple of times to help others in the park who had uh, health issues out there. And so this has been a, a wonderful device. I also have the ability to send or receive very short text messages. I don't do it often, but once in a while, if there's an emergency, my wife may need to let me know, or if I'm really running hours late and I'm way back in the middle of nowhere without cell connection, I can let her know. And so this always is attached to my bag. Uh, I don't go, go anywhere without it. And then lastly, I have, well, almost last, I have, uh, my gloves that I wear, a sun hat, a warm hat, and a sweatband, and they all attach to, the, to a little carabiner here to the front of my pack, 
and that way I can pull off, you know, the temperatures are, you may start off freezing cold and need the hat and gloves, and then as you're skiing up a mountain, you start to get hot and you have to take them off, so things are coming on and off, so I keep them attached to the front. And then lastly, I have a little bit of Kleenex, and then I have some sun blocking lip balm, again, to protect from that intense sun. All in all, my bag weighs about 37 pounds. I know, that's a lot of weight. In fact, it's more weight than I would prefer to carry. But uh, you're probably not carrying 17 pounds of photo gear. You may not be out skiing with a helmet and uh, goggles and avalanche beacon and all of that gear as well. So that's going to save you quite a bit of weight. But I really do hope that you have some extra clothing, hat, gloves, jacket for being out there, that you're going to have water and food and a headlamp, sunscreen, and a first aid kit and water. You need to have those things when you're going out in the mountains. And if you go out thoughtfully, well prepared, and if you follow the golden rule, which is always let someone know where you're going and when you're going to return, stick to your plan and let them know when you're back, then you're going to be in good shape and have a wonderful time out here in Colorado. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and subscribe. It would really be a big help. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you all in the next video. To help you prepare for your visit to Rocky Mountain National Park, visit my website, RockyMountainNationalPark.com. For hiking guides, calendars, coffee table books, and more, visit RockyTrailPress.com. And when you arrive, be sure and stop by my gallery in downtown Estes Park. It's called Images of RMNP.